Jax made a curious personnel move yesterday, at least I thought so. I thought I'd pick the brain of the best kicker in Jaguars history. Josh Scobie joins us on the hotline now. Scobes, good to talk to you. It's been too long. I know. It's been a while. Uh, first of all, congratulations. Excellent work on the schedule release video. You're no Pug Dieterson, but I thought you held your own. You know what? I'm. Uh, they've actually recruited me now to do those <laughs> uh, like infomercials. Yeah, and, sure. Uh, yeah. Possibly soap operas, just because of that one thing. <laughs> I like it. Um, how you been? What's what's your golf schedule like? What are you What are you playing? Are you Are you playing competitive golf? What? what? Yeah, just I mean, just doing you know fun events. I had some member guests recently, and have a couple fun events in the next two months uh, that I get to travel to. So is it? Are we uh, going back to like Sweden or wherever it was? We had you <laughs> went to Switzerland. Yeah. What is it? Yeah, that's right. Uh, next month, it Monaco and Italy, <laughs> and then. Just- Oh, the that's, life of a that's kicker. That's a fun one. I mean, it's really just a, a party more than golf, but we we play a little golf in between. Scobie, I remember when kickers, you know, they got out, they had to go back to work, be bus drivers or whatnot. I mean, it's just what a glorious age to be a pro athlete. And my man just plays, you know, the kicking position at an all-pro level and then just, you know, jet sets and plays golf for the rest of his life. Good for you, my well, man. You know, fortunately, I had a, a smart – Woman uh, yeah. helping me out. <laughs> Don't we all and not do dumb things? And, you know, we, we, <laughs> that's fair. We were smart with what I made. Yeah, that's fair. All right, uh, were you as shocked as I was at, at the move yesterday? I mean, Riley Patterson struggled a little bit when the Jaguars uh, first signed him a year ago, and we went through that. You know, we went through you know a good solid year of sketchy kicking around here, but he settled into his own. He hit a one of the biggest kicks in franchise history, quite frankly, when he beat the Chargers. In overtime, he's young, he's accurate. I was, I was surprised. You? I was very surprised, and I mean, I, I felt like with the season that he had, even though, you know, some people felt like he might have struggled, he was still thirty of thirty-five on field goals, which is more field goals than I ever made in a season, and a, a really high percentage. Um, so I felt like he at least deserved to compete for the job in camp, and if not, be handed the job. Um, and also at the same time, I understand signing someone like Brandon McManus with the success he's had and his strong leg. But, you know, I've gotten to know Riley over the offseason. We play golf a few times together, and uh, I, was, I was definitely uh, upset about it. And, you know, being a, a kicker that's been traded before, it kind of hit home with me. So, you know, surprise, but that's just the, the business we, uh, what they live in, what I lived into. Well, let me ask you uh, this. You know, it seemed like it would be a, like a bottom line business. And last year, uh, Brandon McManus went 78% on his field goal attempts. And uh, Riley Patterson hit 85%. Riley Patterson hit 30 of 35. Uh, Brandon McManus hit 28 of 36. Um, Patterson missed only one extra point. Uh, McManus missed two and 10 fewer kicks. McManus is known for that big leg, right? We've always known that, but there's yep. this, this mile high thing too, right? We always are a little bit more cynical about Colorado Rockies when it, when you talk about Major League Baseball and their offensive numbers because of that altitude. I wonder if that doesn't affect the kicking. So I just so what is it that goes into like what do you see if you're looking at kickers and you take a guy who's seven years older and who statistically wasn't the equal of the guy that you're moving on from? Well, it just depends on who wanted him, whether it was Trent Baalke. Doug Peterson or the special teams coach. It, it just depends. It's one of those three people that felt like that was an upgrade at the position. And as soon as that one person wants them, then they're going to get them. And unfortunately, that was the case with Riley. And I mean, I spoke to him last night about this and, you know, tried to encourage him and try to tell him to keep his head up because it had nothing to do with performance. It was just one person, in my opinion, that wanted to bring him in one or more people that is and that's what happened and I mean not to say or take anything away from Brandon McManus because he's been a really good kicker and he has a you know a cannon for a leg uh it, it's just un, in my opinion unfair that Riley after what he did for the team and the big kicks that he made that he didn't have the opportunity to to stay here and and continue his career did it catch him by surprise like I don't and look I'm Generally, pretty well in tune. And listen, we're we're as it is, and you know this from playing the position. You know, we're grinding on potential upgrades at the defensive line or free agent. You know, 
uh, additions at other positions. So, I mean, I've not even thought – I thought the kicking position was stable. I kind of thought they targeted uh, Patterson, you know, early last season, waited on him to get released, and I thought he'd be here uh, for the long term. I'm wondering, was was he surprised and caught off guard or at that position? Do you just understand, you know, that it, it could happen? Yeah, I felt like he was surprised by it and, you know, probably a little down uh, about it because he had acclimated himself to the city very well. And, I mean, he's, number one, a good human being and uh, a very good kicker and very young, too, which I thought he would be here for a while. Uh, so, yeah, I think he was a little surprised by it. Uh, but the good thing is he was traded, which means at least another team does want him and want him to compete for the job. Uh, but at the same time, I mean, any anytime you're released from a team or traded, uh, I mean, you get a little down and wonder why it happened and go back through why it might have happened. But in the long run, it might just come down to one person who is a, near the top that might not want you there, and they might think that they could get an upgrade somewhere. Well, the one area where McManus, you know, it, is definitely more proficient is, you know, he, he tried 13 50-plus yard field goals last year and made eight of them. Now, again, we're talking about playing at, you know, yeah. mile high. Does that matter? Is that a difference? I'd have to know of these eight of these 13, how many were in Denver, and doesn't that become like a more makeable kick, obviously, if you're at that altitude, right? Yeah, it does make a difference because the ball does go a lot farther in Denver than it does anywhere else. And, I mean, there's a reason they attempted that many is because he does have a strong leg, and the ball does travel a lot farther. Uh, but, I mean, typically whenever agents and GMs get in contract negotiations, they'll look at stats, not necessarily field goal percentage, but they'll break it down to the average uh, attempt of a field goal and the average make of a field goal yardage-wise. So I would imagine that McManus's attempts were a whole lot longer than Riley's were. And so I'm assuming that they're looking at the potential for, you know, attempting 56, 57 yard field goals with ease instead of 52 and 53 yarders. So I'm wondering, and because with that was yeah. the one thing about Patterson, we always thought they only tried three. I mean, in today's NFL, the three that he tried is much, much fewer than any other regular starting kicker. I mean, there, there's more than there's a half dozen or so kickers in the NFL who tried double digits from 50, you know, or longer last year. So I, you know, I, w- I wouldn't think that it would be a total squeeze out based on just that, but does it stir up like like painful memories for you, Josh? I know you have moved well on uh, from your <laughs> NFL career, but you know, I mean, w- and by the way, you had a lot more, you had a lot more on your resume when, you know, w- when it came time for, for you to leave Jacksonville, I'm wondering if it stirs up any of that when you see a buddy kind of going through the same thing. Yeah, oh, that it absolutely did just because I remember going through it and, you know, the day it happened and just the, uh, emotions you go through in terms of happiness, sadness, uh, wondering what's going to happen. How am I going to move all my stuff to where I got traded to? Mm-hmm. Just, uh, you know, the range of emotions that go with it. And, uh, and like I told Riley last night, I mean, I got traded at the end of my career and he's getting traded at the beginning of his career. So he shouldn't look at this as, as anything negative, but just let it motivate him for the next team. I would think that there is a spot. I tell you, I like you want to know some irony. You remember where the Jaguars got Patterson from? They just waited out the Lions. Yeah. They knew they were going to have to have yep. to cut him, and so the Jags pick him up. And here a year later, they trade him back to the Lions. Um, not exactly great roster management there in Detroit, but uh, nonetheless, we'll wish Riley Patterson again, in, in part because we haven't had a ton of winning years around here, right? But that that kick that he made last year to beat the Chargers is certainly top five. Now you probably have the other four. I can't keep up with <laughs> can't keep up with the fifty yarders that you hit to beat Indy through the years, but there were certainly a number of a number of big kicks you know along the way. It's just it's a tough position, man. I mean it it's is a, it is yeah. it, I don't know if any other position it's certainly not in football, maybe in sport where it can it can change as quickly as it can with a kicker and I can't imagine what gets it. And we've seen it with a, a bunch of other names. Once it gets in your head, and then on top of that, you factor in, here's a kid that really didn't do anything to lose his job. I was super surprised. So, tell uh, at last word, and I know you spoke to his leg strength, but just uh, Brandon McManus in general, what you know, what kind of career he's had. And, you know, he is older, but Scobes, it seems like if you were healthy, you kick till you're 37, 38 years old, no problem, without really 
you know, losing much of your success. Not everyone, but some of them have been able to. Would you say McManus in his prime, and I know he had his best year last year, are we talking about a top five kicker, or are kickers really one to 25 really similar? I would say he's still, you know, a top five to top 10 kicker. He's one of my favorites to watch on TV or watch in person kick because I do like his style. I like, he's a tall, big, tall kicker. And I like watching guys like that because they just make it look easy. And it makes it's kind of like Tony Finau in golf, just easy swing and they crush the ball. Um, but I, I still think he's got a lot of years. As long as he stays healthy and kicks well, he's got a lot of years left. And, um, you know, he, he, the reason his percentages aren't as high as they should be is because he's attempted so many long field goals. And if he hadn't, it would be higher. But, you know, it, it's still... In the back of my mind, I wish Riley was still the kicker here, but that's just the business, and you have to deal with it and move on and go from there. All right, my brother, I'm glad you're doing well. You know, don't worry about us. Have fun in you know Belgium or wherever the hell you said you were Belgium. going. <laughs> uh, what what what, what kind of, that's got to be some beautiful golf over there. Right? I mean, you playing like alpine mountain courses? Is that what we're is that what we're talking about? Yeah, that's it's basically just mountainous, you yeah. know, golf courses at at mm. elevation and. They're beautiful, but they're not in the best condition. They're, I mean, it, it would be like going to play, you know, Windsor Park on a good day. I hear uh, you. Which, not to throw any shade. No, at no, Windsor I hear Park, you. But right, that's not, you know, yeah. you're not playing TPC Sawgrass. You just, but it's yeah. still, it's I, I, by the way, am the, the, I'm the least golf snob you ever meet. I mean, you just jam 18 into the yeah. middle of the dirt somewhere, and I'll go play it, and I won't complain. It is what it is. So, uh, part of that's probably the golf I grew up playing for the most part. What? Uh, give me, give me a, give me a. Give me a golf highlight. Tell me something that's happened. You've had a whole one in the last three or four hours. Have you set a new career <laughs> low? Have you won any sectional? I mean, what? Give me, give me something. Give me something I can I, latch on to. I, I have not had a hole in one in a good year and a half or so. <laughs> uh, but I was at Augusta last week for three days. See, uh, you know, yeah. Seems so that, that was a, I, I, I had two holes in a row on the par three course that I left out. Mm. Uh, they were just the pins were. They typically put them for the par three tournament. Are you allowed to and, say uh, like how? Are you allowed to say which member had you on? Who were you there with? How did you play? Are they like swear you to secrecy? Hunt oh, you no, down? They, what do you no, got? That, it was Ron Townsend. He's okay, a sure. member that yeah. lives here. Sure, sure. So he he takes me every year. Oh, gotcha. and he's, he's he's a good man. He is. I know a bunch of people that have been to Augusta yeah. and played with Ron Townsend through the years. So. <laughs> so do I. Yeah. So do I. All right. Well. Uh, keep up the good work. Have fun. Safe travels. Uh, we'll we'll talk to you shortly. Thanks for your candor and and speaking out on uh, this kicking change. And you know it's as shocking to Scobie as it was to anyone. Thank you, Josh. All right, you got it, guys. All right, man. There he goes. That's the uh, you know him. You love him.